Today, we're gonna to be finding the answer to a question that absolutely nobody is asking. Can you upgrade the M1 Max MacBook Pro to an M2 Max MacBook Pro? In other words, can you actually swap the logic boards? This is something that I tried over the summer with the new M2 MacBook Pro, and I found that it was not possible. And it seems like the reason for that is that Apple changed something with their keyboard but this is a newer design, and as far as I know, there's no differences in the top case or the display that would, theoretically at least, prevent these logic boards from being interchangeable. Now at this point, you might be wondering, Luke, what's the point of this? Who cares if you can swap the logic boards and go from M1 Max to M2 Max? Why are you doing this? And the simple answer is, because I'm curious. What more do you need? I wanna know if it works. But beyond just simple curiosity, there are some actual reasons why you would wanna be able to swap these parts out. For example, let's say you crack your display. Do you need to buy the exact one from a 2021 MacBook Pro or can you use one from a 2022? I've also heard that swapping displays can cause True Tone to break or various artifacting to show up. Today, we're gonna to find out if that's the case. Let's say you spill water on your M1 Pro MacBook logic board and you wanna upgrade it yourself. Why not just go out and get an M2 Max? Upgrade your whole system. Will it work? Today, we're gonna to find out. So, the first thing that we need to do is get under the hood and see what's different, if anything. I'll tell you one thing before we get started, though, and that's all of this MacBook testing and now swapping these logic boards, it really does work up an appetite. But thanks to today's sponsor, HelloFresh, eating well in the new year with new MacBooks can be stress-free and delicious. Yesterday, while testing thermal performance, for example, I went for the pork sausage rigatoni. And with fresh ingredients delivered straight from the farm in less than seven days, I was really pleased with how it came out. I didn't have to run to the grocery store in the middle of testing, and I didn't have to risk food waste with leftover ingredients. Everything is perfectly portioned, and the directions are easy to follow, which is great because my mind is awash with Cinebench and Blender numbers. HelloFresh can also be cheaper than shopping for groceries and about 25% less than ordering takeout. Plus, you get the satisfaction of cooking yourself without the hassle of picking out a recipe and making sure you have all the right ingredients or going to the store to get more, yada yada yada. So go to HelloFresh.com and use code LUKEMIANI21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. A big thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. And now let's, uh, let's get back to it, shall we? All right, so let's get under the hood of the M1 Max so we can have a point of comparison. All right, M2 Max, here we come, conveniently color-coded in silver so that we can tell which one is which. Well, yep, that looks familiar. Can't say I'm surprised. All right, let's get them side by side here and we can play spot the difference with these two very similar looking MacBooks. So the first thing that I'm noticing is we now have these little foam pads on top of the ports and it looks like from the factory, it's a little bit wrinkled. In fact, look at this keyboard connector, this backlight connector, the fan connector. Those are all a little bit bent. I promise I did not open this before now like that is how it came from the factory. But more importantly, all of the hard points, the connections and the mounting screws look like they are exactly the same. All the ports, the location of the trackpad connectors and the speaker mounts over here. Interestingly, I noticed when I reviewed the M2 Max MacBook Pro that it had a faster SSD, and sure enough, these NAND modules are different from what we see on the M1 Max MacBook Pro. This all looks good. I think that these boards should be at least physically interchangeable. You know, where else on YouTube are you gonna watch some guy risk eight grand worth of laptops for a silly experiment? Okay, we'll start with these connectors. They all have little brackets holding them down. This is gonna be a lot of screws. All right, so now we're gonna go around and unplug everything. Now, what are all of these? Well, over here, we've got the headphone jack. We've got both of our USB-C ports, as well as MagSafe. This little guy up here, I believe, is the lid angle sensor. And disconnecting it turns on the machine, apparently. 
Okay, word to the wise, disconnect the battery before you disconnect everything else. I forgot to do that, oops. So to get to the battery, we pull up the trackpad cable, and then we've got this little guy here. So now we'll use the spudger here to pry up, and now our battery is disconnected. Right, so as I was saying, we've disconnected the stuff over here. We do have a speaker connection that's just ever so slightly hidden down there. And then we've got displays up here. Touch ID, I think, is what that is. And our final USB port. Okay, so with both the fans disconnected, I think that's everything. Now we've got the T5 out and we're gonna go around and unscrew the logic board. And you might wanna keep track because these are different sizes. Okay, we're almost ready to take this logic board out, but there are two funky screws you gotta watch out for. Over here in the bottom left and right corners, we have these weird six-sided boys. You need a special screw bit that goes around them. All right, now before you yank a board out, always do a very thorough visual check. Oh, I missed one. This is why you always do a visual check. No matter how many MacBooks you take apart, there's always something missing. Okay, here we go. Careful, careful. Ta-da! That's a logic board right there. Ooh, that is a big boy. So we're gonna set that off to the side and bring in the M2 Max, an even more valuable logic board. Yay. You guys don't have to watch me do this whole thing again, so I'll just insert some footage of a pumpkin. Oh hey, welcome back. It's time to pull this logic board out. I'm, as usual, a little nervous. This is $4,000 in my hands right now. The trick is to go nice and slow, double check that nothing is plugged in that could get ripped out, and wiggle it a little bit. Find where the sticking points are. And then we're gonna start lifting a little bit more gradually. Come on, nearly there. Ah, there it is. Woo! It's always stressful when you're doing this with multi-thousand dollar machines. But now the real fun begins, because we can set our M2 off to the side and bring our M1 Max back. We're just gonna insert the M2 board in here and see what happens. So of course we wanna save the battery for last, and I'm just gonna go around and give this guy a couple of screws. I don't really see the need to do the whole board. We are in the home stretches here. Uh, my heart is beating real fast. Okay, we do have one more, this absolutely microscopic little flex cable. I really hate these things because they are so fragile, but if you break one and they're screwed into this top case, new top case. You're kidding. Okay, the trackpad connectors are different length. So the trackpad on the M1 Max does not plug in to the M2 Max logic board. Why would they do that? Okay, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put a pin in that because um, I just want to see if it's gonna power on at all, and then if it does, maybe we'll swap the trackpads. Okay, didn't didn't fire up when I opened the lid. Will it turn on? Oh no! All right, let's try MagSafe. Is that gonna work? Not even getting a light on the MagSafe. Oh, okay, I'm now getting a light. Oh my God! It's booting. Does the keyboard work? Whoa, fans ahoy. Okay, not happy, not happy. No keyboard. We do not have a keyboard. I don't think it's very happy, but it worked. It turned on, and the screen looks fine. Let's uh, let's get back in, and I think we're gonna swap the trackpads. Let's see if that does anything. Okay, well, at the very least, removing the trackpads on these things are super duper easy. There are five screws on this side, five screws on this side, and three down the middle, and then the whole thing just flops out. 
This is a disaster. Okay, so our new trackpad is in. Let's reconnect the battery and try it all again. Okay, moment of truth. We have our <laughs> really funny mismatched MacBook, but you know what? Maybe, maybe that's just an aesthetic choice. Who knows? Uh, fans are back. Trackpad works. Keyboard. <gasps> Keyboard works. Okay, we're getting somewhere. It works. Kind of. I'm still not sure what's up with the fans. I uh, don't know why they're doing that. But look, folks. We upgraded a MacBook Pro from M1 Max to M2 Max. Holy cow. Okay, now things are a little bit weird. So the battery, I'm not sure is working. It says service recommended. All right, it does say that there is a battery. Let's see what happens if I unplug. Okay, so it is working, but it seems like something in the battery's hardware isn't compatible here because it doesn't seem to know how much charge it has. And it says zero cycles, service recommended. All right, so I installed TG Pro and sure enough, our system setting is just max fans. So, so something about this part swap, it does not like very much. So given what we've seen here, I would say the display does seem to be more or less interchangeable. Obviously, you're losing true tone as far as I can tell, but you can swap out your display on your own, no problem. The top case though, uh, yeah, not so much. It seems like something here is making the fans spin. You do have to swap the trackpad just to get the connector to fit, and you're also losing Touch ID, and it seems like the battery just doesn't know anything about itself. Let's put everything back together and talk about what this means. All right, well, we've got everything back together now and I'm honestly very intrigued by the results of this experiment. I'm a lot more satisfied than the last time I tried to do M1 to M2 where it just nothing worked. At least this time, we found that the M1 Max to the M2 Max upgrade is kind of possible. However, while it did kind of work, I can't exactly recommend that you take your M1 Pro or Max MacBook Pro and try to upgrade it because, I, I mean, the top case isn't really compatible. It does work and it will turn on, but you lose Touch ID unless you transfer that over you lose your trackpad unless you transfer that over as well. And seemingly you lose the ability to know how charged your battery is and the fans are gonna be screaming all the time. So really the end of this video is really less, can you upgrade your MacBook Pro, but it's more of a which parts are interchangeable. And it seems like the trackpad is a no-go. The top case is probably a no-go. The battery, somehow seems like a no-go, but the display, well, the display kind of works. And I say kind of because for whatever reason, Apple needs to go through their self-service repair or a Genius Bar tech if you want True Tone to work. But that's, that's all Apple's doing. The actual display works perfectly fine. So overall, uh, I guess I'm a little split on this because well, the precedent set by the M2 MacBook Pro is no upgrade not happening. But what we saw here was, I don't know, maybe. And again, I think the findings from this video are more of a curiosity now. Nobody's gonna actually be trying to upgrade an M1 Max to an M2 Max right now. But this is the type of information which will hopefully become useful in a couple of years when these things are used computers that people are finding, repairing, or upgrading on their own. So if you are watching this video from five years in the future and you're like, ah, good to know, I won't buy that M2 top case for my M1 that I'm fixing up, you're welcome. And if you're watching this right now in 2023, well, I hope you found it useful. I'm certainly very intrigued by all of this and I had a lot of fun, even though it was a little stressful with $8,000 worth of laptops just taken apart on my desk. Anyway, if you wanna help me get over my stressful day, leave a like down below and don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video.
Thank you.